a daily confession that Jesus is Lord, that he is victor, he is master, he is champion, he is your Lord, and his victory is your victory. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. One of my favorite subjects, I would have to say, is uh, faith, but specifically on the speaking part of faith mm -hmm. or the saying part mm -hmm. of faith. So we're going to look at the confession of your faith, the significance, the importance, and the <coughs> value of that is one of the most important and valuable, significant subjects in the whole Bible. Uh, I learned that from Kenneth E. Hagin, from Dad Hagin. Yeah. He's, Dad Hagen said he could actually uh, teach uh, for two months every day on the subject of confession, the confession of your faith. He said, I could do that every day for two months and never run out of material. Let's keep going. When he said that, I thought, wow, there's a lot more here than just one or two sermons. Right. You know, he said he could, that would be like 60, 60 sermons one after another. If you were a pastor and you did it every Sunday morning, that'd be over a year of every Sunday morning teaching on the significance, the importance of your confession mm -hmm. of faith. And actually Christianity is called the great confession. Yeah. What is that confession? Well, that confession is that Jesus is Lord. Actually, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, it is this confession that Jesus is Lord and all that it means, it is that confession that precedes the experience of salvation. It actually produces the reality of salvation in your own life. And it's not just the initial confession of not only salvation, but everything salvation includes. That would be deliverance and safety and healing and preservation and soundness, the blessing of the Lord, everything that's in the gospel, he said is actually possessed by your confession. So your confession precedes your possession. So it's more than just an altar call scripture, something you did 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. It actually becomes a daily confession of your faith, a daily confession that Jesus is Lord, that he is victor, he is master, he is champion, he is your Lord, and his victory is your victory. And Jesus paid it all, it belongs to you, but it is your confession that actually uh, precedes and produces the possession of your salvation. So it's a very important, significant uh, subject. And um, many times as Christians, if you just use or think about the word confession, people immediately think about some uh, negative confession of your failure and what's wrong with you and your sin. Well, uh, there's a lot more in the New Testament on the confession of your faith than there is on the confession of your failure. And so uh, he says, this is the confession precedes salvation. I like to say, this is the one confession that will keep you out of hell. <laughs> that whoever <laughs> calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Then it's that one confession that'll keep you out of hell. It's that one confession that actually God's already done everything he's going to do about your salvation 2,000 years ago. It is that confession that actually produces the experience of salvation in your life. All right, makes it a reality, makes it real to you. So it becomes a very significant and important subject. Amen. So I can't live by your confession. Yeah. I mean, that really helps me when you confess good things yeah. over me. But I've got to make it a personal thing, just like eating. We can't eat for your somebody else. Yeah. You've got to eat for yourself. Whatever yeah. you put in your, your. own mouth, yeah. whatever you uh, digest, that yeah. becomes part of your 
physical body. Yeah. And so this is such a personal thing. And very important. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, we'll go to Hebrews 4.14 for just one second where Paul says, seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, yeah. the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, it says in the King James, but actually that word profession is the same identical Greek word in Romans 10, 9 and 10, the confession, hold fast to your confession. And the Amplified Bible says, hold fast to the confession of your faith in him or in Christ. Seeing what Jesus has done for you, he's already passed into the heavens and now the answer is in your mouth, your confession of who Christ is who he is to you and what he's done for you. It is that confession that produces the reality of salvation because in the mind of God, Jesus died for everybody 2000 years ago, but it became a reality to you when you received it and you declared it that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Now, before we go any further, go to um, Mark 11, 22, 23, because I want to point out one thing here. Um, the importance of um, faith and the speaking. All right, so look at Mark 11, 22, mm -hmm. where Jesus said, have faith in God. Jesus he, talked a lot about the speaking part the speaking of faith. The speaking or the saying the part. Saying. Actually, Jesus said, yes. if you will confess me before men, I will confess you Amen. before the Father. So that's pretty significant. Yes. I think that's Matthew 10, 32. He said, you confess me before men, in other words, what you say on the earth actually activates something that happens in heaven. Mm -hmm. so, you confess uh, me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. Like you just mentioned in Hebrews 4, you know, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. We yeah. have our high priest. Yeah. He's our lawyer in heaven. Yeah. And so he takes our confession yeah. of faith and he uh, is our intercessor to the Father. And he's our defender mm. against the enemies. Yeah, and he's there now in the presence of God. And then he says, actually, in Hebrews 3, 1, uh, talking about Jesus, consider him. He is the apostle and he is the high priest of our profession. So really, Jesus right now is not retired in heaven. He's not playing golf. He's not goofing off. Jesus right now in his ministry at the right hand of God he actually is the apostle, which means the sent one, and he is the high priest of our profession. Our profession was the same word as confession. So he says to consider him. So your confession does not make you confession conscious. It makes you Jesus conscious that you look to him. He's the author and he's the finisher of your faith that you study him. You look to Jesus, look to him, see what he's done for you. See the victory that belongs to you through his blood. So you study him, look to him. And then when you look to him, he says, now he's the high priest of your confession. That means right now at the right hand of God, uh, God or Jesus, you could say right now at the right hand of God, Jesus, apostle, high priest of your confession. So he literally is waiting for you to say something that brings you into agreement with what he has done for you and who he is. In other words, he actually needs you to say something about what he's done for you on the cross, his death, his burial, resurrection. He needs you to say something about that. And he says that actually activates something in heaven. So he says, Jesus now is the high priest and the apostle of your profession, Perfect. your confession. Mm -hmm. So that means it becomes very significant, your confession, because it actually registers in heaven itself. Wow. So how significant is that? Now, go back to Mark 11, 23 real quickly here, because this is something very significant that I learned from Kenneth E. Hagin or from Dad Hagin. Right. All right. And he emphasizes actually Mark 11, 23, you probably know this. So listen again. Uh, he said, whosoever shall say, he counted it once, under this mountain be removed, be cast, see, shall not doubt in heart, believe those things which he saith, two, believe those things he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, three. 
So in reference to the believer, mm -hmm. the saying part is three times in Mark eleven twenty three, and the believing part is only in there once. Mm -hmm. Actually, he said the Lord Jesus spoke to him and said, you'll have to do three times more teaching on the saying part of faith than you do on the believing part of faith. Mm -hmm. He said, because most of my children are missing it in the saying part. Right. He said, you'll have to teach them that three times more than just the believing part. He said, our people won't get it, and that's where they're missing it. Because a lot of times people say, well, I believe, I believe, but it's not enough just to be the believer. You're going to have to say what you believe, or you could say the authority of the believer actually is activated with words or speaking. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out, he shall have whatsoever he saith, which means... Uh, you can't just have what I say. Right. Come on, I can't do this for everybody else. We can help each other yeah, out with you can good help confessions people, but about them and yeah, prayers yeah. filled with the word. That's very important. But yeah. that we all stand before God personally. Yeah. And uh, we have to give account for mm -hmm. our own life. Yeah. So it's so important to take this message <laughs> and make it real in them and use it every day in our life. Yeah, and actually Jesus said that you will give account for yeah. your word. By your words, you'll be justified, mm -hmm. and by your words, you'll be condemned. So the words that come out of your mouth, not just at church, but on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, those words, he said, will determine your justification. Or those words can actually do you damage. They can right. hurt you. So go back to Mark 11, 23 real quickly here. Can I say yes, something? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Because you inspired me uh, to go back to Romans, the eighth chapter. And Paul is, you know, he's talking about yeah. so many wonderful things. But then um, he says, what then, in verse 31, what then yeah. shall we say yeah. to all these things that are going on? If God before us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And then he says, who can bring a charge against God's elect? Yeah. And that's you. It is God that justifies. It's God that justifies. But again, he needs us to say something. What shall we say? What shall we say? Because our attorney, our lawyer in heaven is And, and look at his to... confession. I mean, if you study yes. uh, some of Paul's declarations and confessions of faith, the significance of that word confession or profession mm -hmm. in some places, but it's really the same word as confession. And the word confession simply means to say the same thing or to agree with. And so sometimes when you're agreeing with God, <laughs> I like to say it this way, uh, God will call you things that there's no evidence that exists. <laughs> <laughs> like with Gideon, he said, Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. Well, there sure was no evidence that existed. Well, his words have a mission. Yeah. They are sent. Yeah. Uh, and he sent his word and healed yeah. you in Psalm yeah. 107.20. And Jesus spoke yeah. into darkness in creation. Yeah, he said. And he said, in the dark, he said, let there be light. <laughs> so he spoke what yeah. he wanted it to become. Yeah, he said, and then he saw, he said, then he saw, he said, then he saw. Oh, the Lord said to me, uh, sound came before sight. Right. And many people are wanting a change of scenery, but God's waiting on a change of sound. In other words, your voice or your words. So God will call you things there's no evidence exists. So when you're confessing in agreement with the Word of God, some people say, well, that's just a lie. Well, not if I'm agreeing with God because God can't lie. <laughs> so it depends on what evidence we're looking at. Yeah. Sometimes I'm looking at my uh, failure. That's the evidence that yeah. I'm using. But we got to look away mm. and we got to put our eyes, like you were talking about, on the Word of God and on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, yeah. and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to say what you say. It's amazing when we put our eyes on Jesus, yeah. we begin to hear him speaking. Yeah, and that's right from Hebrews 3, 1, where it says, consider him yeah. the apostle and high so priest. In good. other words, he's saying, look to Jesus, study him. And one of the interesting things about Jesus in the four gospels is that Jesus was constantly confessing his identity 
and his destiny. <laughs> he's constantly confessing his identity, who he is. He's confessing where he came from. He's confessing where he's going. He's confessing what's going to happen ahead of time. And so Jesus is constantly confessing. So a lot of times people say, well, I just want to be like Jesus. I don't want to hear about all that confession. I just want to be like the Lord. Well, that's what the Lord did, is he's constantly making a confession of his identity. He actually found himself in the book of Isaiah and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. So Jesus found himself in Isaiah 61 and just agreed with that. And he said, that's who I am and that's what I have. And so that's his first sermon came from his agreement with the Word of God. So you find yourself in the Word of God and then you make a confession that brings you into agreement with that. That's a major part of your faith. Matter of fact, you cannot, you cannot separate faith and the confession of faith. Amen. And what you say usually springs out of what you've been thinking. Yeah. So it's so important what we meditate on. Yeah. And the thoughts that we say, okay, I'm gonna think on that. Or you can say, no, I'm not going to think on that. Consider that. Actually, <laughs> your, your, your mouth can change your mind. Exactly. <laughs> I like the Passion Translation, Mark, yeah. of Hebrews 3, 1. He says, uh, so fasten your thoughts fully onto Jesus. That's Hebrews 3, 1 in the Passion. In the Passion. Fasten. Yeah. So it's a process of fastening your thoughts fully on Jesus, that mean, means his word, yeah. what he has spoken to you, yeah. his thoughts towards you, they're good. Yeah. And so we have to fasten our thoughts. And so that takes our meditation. Yeah. What are we thinking about while yeah. we're in the kitchen? What are we thinking about when we're looking at Facebook or whatever yeah. you're Consider doing? Consider him. Consider, I'm thinking, what does Jesus say about this? Consider him. Uh, study him, actually the word consider there includes meditate on him, turn your eyes, your expectation to him, and then your confession comes out of that. Mm -hmm. I like that. So the fasten, fasten yourself <laughs> to him. So your confession, when he says in Hebrews 4, 14, hold fast to your confession, Amen. then that's really like uh, your confession fastens yourself to the Lord Jesus because you're fastening yourself and your confession to him and it fastens you to him and it holds you tight, holds you close to him. So you are the uh, essence of your words and yeah. your meditation. Yeah, and so in, in our jet, our airplane, mm -hmm. uh, we've had it for many years and it's a great serve, serving, right. it helps us serve the body of Christ, but that the jet has um, millions of uh, rivets that fasten the skin to little uh, tiny rivets. Yeah, the fuselage and those rivets, man. They, you got like millions of fasteners, <laughs> and so your confession uh, uh, fastens you to Jesus. Hold fast. It means fasten. Hold on tight. Don't turn loose of it. Hold fast to your confession of faith in it. It fastens you to Jesus, and it fastens you together so you're not falling to pieces. <laughs> yeah, you won't fall to pieces. So, uh, back to Mark 11, 23, what Jesus said, and then what Dad Hagen uh, learned from the Lord, and he said, the Lord told him, uh, did you ever notice, he said he was praying, and he said, um, uh, at the altar, praying in his church, and he had his Bible open there, talking to the Lord, and um, he said, then the Lord spoke to him while he was there praying and said, did you ever notice in Mark 11, 23, I mentioned the saying part in reference to the believer. I mentioned the saying part three times and the believing part only once. Dad Hagen said, well, no, I never noticed that. So he actually turned in his Bible right there at the altar to Mark 11, 23. Come on, he's known for that called the authority of the believer. He turns to Mark 11, 23, and he just goes ahead and counts it. He said, I never noticed that. So he said he went ahead and did it with his, with his fingers. He's just right there, he's got his hands there, and he goes, in reference to the believer, that whosoever, talking about the believer, shall say, he did that one, on this mountain be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith, that's two, 
shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's three. Well, how many times does they believe? He goes, all right, but shall believe. Well, that's one. So the Lord told him three to one. You'll have to do <laughs> three times more teaching on the saying or the confession of faith or the speaking part of faith than you do on just the believing part. He said, most people are missing it in the saying or the speaking part of faith. I like to say it this way, that faith is an act and the initial act of faith is your faith must move your mouth. In other words, your, your faith must move your mouth. <laughs> so speaking is the initial act of faith. Amen. And you always say this phrase, you can school yourself into yeah. faith, even if you don't well, I, have a high level of faith, you can school yourself. What do you do at if school? If you're struggling with doubt, yeah. What are you doing when you're schooling yourself and prepping for a test? Mm -hmm. You're going to go over that, you know. Yeah. You're going to really study it. You're going to yeah. write it down. You're going to be thinking about it. You repeat it. You look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. schooling. So I got that from Dad Hagen that he said, uh, if you're struggling in some area, maybe doubt or whatever situation you're in, he said you can actually school yourself into faith yeah. with your own words. In other words, you, you say and agree with God, speak words of faith, and you may have doubt or struggle in your mind, but he said you can have faith in your heart when you're also having doubt or struggle in your mind. Amen. He said you believe in your heart, but then you say, 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 you let it register on your heart. Now your, your words are in agreement with a spiritual reality, even though your mind or your circumstances uh, may be something different. So Dad Hagen said, even if failure is on <laughs> all four wow. corners, yeah. hold fast to your confession of faith. Even if failure is on all four mm. corners, in wow. other words, you're surrounded, everything, it looks like it's, a, it's failing, your experience, your situation. He said, no matter what it looks like on the outside, you must hold on tight. Hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering. Hold on tight. Don't Amen. let it go. Keep saying the same thing. Amen. Come on, this is your great confession. Jesus is still Lord. I still believe, no matter what my experience has been, I still believe God. I still believe the Word of God. And you could be going down. <laughs> yeah, you could be having But difficult. like in an airplane, if you're going down, you got to pull up on the... Um, yeah. What is that? The yoke, they call it, they actually call it, you change your attitude. Change instead of your attitude. attitude. Down, instead of attitude descending, <laughs> attitude ascending. So you just reverse it. Yeah. So it's never too late to change your confession. Hold fast to your confession yeah. and faith. Hold Amen. on tight. Hold so on tight. three times more. Now, why did he have that experience? Well, he said <laughs> he learned about faith from the Lord. And he said, even though he had read the New Testament through 150 times. Mm. He read the whole New Testament through 150 times. He said, that was my Bible school. <laughs> he's so got he's, me, B. He read the New Testament through 150 times. <laughs> I need to get times. to work. Now think about that. I mean, you could read that and you think, well, anybody ought to be able to see that. Right. But he said, even though I'd read the New Testament 150 times, he said, I never noticed Mark 11, 23. Mm. I never noticed the importance and the significance of say, 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 and believe. Camp Meeting 2023. Mark and Trina invite you to celebrate 50 years of ministry. Save the date June 27 through 29 in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have a power-packed lineup of speakers, including Reverend Patsy Caminetti, Reverend Ted Shuttlesworth Jr., music with Ray Jean Wilson, and much more. This is a life-changing experience for the whole family. Please join us June 27th through 29th. Register today at markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There is a tremendous power in the positive confession of who Christ is, what He has done, and what He is doing for us right now at the right hand of God. 
Your faith will never rise above the level of your confession. Satan trembles when you open the word, but he runs when you speak the word. Your confession of faith brings you into a consciousness of who you are in Christ. The word of God was spoken before it was written, and it was written so it could be spoken. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's word. For your offering of any amount, we will send you Mark's new book, The Great Confession. In this book, you will learn the power of a positive confession of the blood of Jesus, who you are in Christ, and the power of speaking God's word. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. Get ready to overcome adversity and watch the mountains in your life move. You'll also receive the brand new three CD set, The Great Confession. In these messages, you will learn the importance of holding fast to your positive confession of faith. You can also listen to these messages for free on the Mark Hankins Ministry app. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your offering will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a three CD set and Pastor Mark Hankins' new book, The Great Confession. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today, and I hope that it was a blessing to you. I know that this message is so powerful, life-changing and life-giving, and I'm so glad that you got to hear it today. Something that is very exciting is my dad came out with a brand new book called The Great Confession. Let me read you a quote from this book by F.F. F. Bosworth. It says, nothing will establish and build your faith as quickly as the confession of who you are and what you have in Christ. Okay, listen to this. Confession precedes possession. It is so important that we speak and proclaim and declare the Word of God over our lives. It's not just enough to, to hear the Word. It's not just enough to look at the Word. It's not just enough to be around the Word. But once you get the Word in your mouth, that's when things begin to change. The good news is we want to get this book to you free of cost, but any amount of gift that you want to do, if you want to contribute any amount, we want to get this book to you in your hands because we know it is going to change your life. So you can call the number on the screen or go to markhankins.org. You can also go on the app and we will send you this book for free. We hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.